And uh, you want me just to expose, or do you have some yeah, questions? Yeah, start out. What, what's the big picture, Kevin? Or how do you see the world? I mean, well, I think I think we're we're in a really interesting uh, transitional time for leadership. I mean, I think uh, all the leadership that we've been taught uh, over the last for several decades has been what I loosely characterize as 20th century leadership, which was designed for a relatively predictable uh, environment. It was designed for relatively homogeneous uh, customer bases and uh, fundamentally a, a non-global world. Um, so we're looking at leadership, whether it's French or American or Chinese or whatever, the leadership was really designed for that particular culture and environment. Uh, it tended to be pretty analytical or mechanistic, uh, and it tended to be based basically on the belief that the world is a pretty um, predictable, rational place. And I think we know as we've moved into the 21st century uh, that none of, none of that's really true. That we live in a very uh, diverse, uh, unpredictable, rapidly changing world, and I think leadership is struggling to figure out how to be more effective, uh, how to really uh, bring forward change and deal with change in an effective way. And the struggle is non-trivial. It's a big deal. And we continue to turn out analytical MBAs who are very good at analyzing the past. They're really good at looking in the rearview mirror and saying that if we sold this last year, we should sell this this year. Uh, but they're really not very good at looking at markets that suddenly shift direction. They're not very good at suddenly um, turning on a dime, let's say, to go in some different direction. They're not good at recognizing emerging trends or patterns and then figuring out how to deal with those emerging patterns or trends. Um, and those are all things that are almost contrary to the competencies of an analytical leader. Sorry. Hands off the table. Because that yeah, gotcha. A little right, thing. right. And I thought that was a good stopping point for something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Are you ready to just take up or do you want to? Yeah, no, we can go on. Um, yeah, I'm going to. I was just thinking I might pull out my notes here out of the, out of the sure. side of the camera you bet. and uh, kind of just use it to jog my memory a bit. Uh, I got to go into my thing. It'll take a minute. If you want to turn it off, it's going to take me a second to get into this thing. If you want to do that. No, yeah, we just let it run. All right. Um, okay, here we are. If I just open this in Keynote. And go back to the beginning here. Okay, all right, let me... Uh, okay. I, so I think our traditional view of leadership was um, was was pretty uh, straightforward. It was a it was a serial thinking process. You know, one leader follows another leader, follows another leader in a very rational progression. Um, you only have one leader at a time. The buck stops here, stops with somebody all the time. There's an ultimate accountability built into the system. Uh, the function of leadership was really around control. And as you've heard me talk before, I'm a real believer that we've shifted from a, a, an environment of control to an environment of choice. And that shift from control to choice is, is really a fundamental uh, conceptual change in how we look at the world. And younger people, particularly today, look at the world as how do I make choices, not how do I control what's going on. And so traditional leadership is really confronted with a sort of a conflict between the younger people who are saying, I want choices, I want to be able to have input, I want to have a debate.